And as, as for like sheltering real, <coughs> real estate, is would you recommend LLCs or trusts or or corporations or is you know is it just kind of like a pick your pick your poison what's best for you kind of thing? Uh, it's not a pick your poison always because there are some more black and white rules with that. Mm -hmm. So one black and white rule is in general you never want to own real estate in a corporation. Okay. okay. And that is because there are tax basis rules and all this that make it difficult to get the property out without tax consequences. So if you're buying, say, like single family rentals, you probably want to uh, want to own those in an LLC um, because of the tax laws and the, the beefed up creditor protection. If you're doing lots and lots and lots of deals, some people will use land trusts. So they buy one property and one land trust and then have the beneficiary of multiple land trusts be one LLC or, you know, yeah. say like for every five land trusts, you have one LLC, what, whatever it is, you have to decide the numbers. The other black and white rule though with land trusts is that people think they're a creditor protected asset um, entity and they're not. They're, they can provide a smoke screen. They can make it harder for a potential creditor to find you. They can make it more difficult for a plaintiff's attorney to have any idea how to deal with a land trust. But in and of themselves, they provide no creditor protection like an LLC does. So, for instance, if I had a house in a land trust and someone slipped and fell in that house and sued the land trust, if they want a judgment, they could get the equity in that house in that land trust. If I took that same house and I had it in an LLC and they sued the LLC and won, what they would get in most, if, if not all states, is a particular type of judgment called a charging order, which puts that creditor in my shoes in terms of benefits of the LLC, but also burdens of the LLC. So, for instance, let's say I had a house, it's owned in an LLC, my tenant slips and falls, they sue my LLC, they win, they get a charging order against my LLC. That does not give them the availability to, or the ability to step in and manage my LLC. They can't dictate that I liquidate any assets in that LLC. They can't demand a distribution. Now, if my LLC decides to make a distribution to its members, to me, then the creditor stands there with their hands out like Oliver Twist and that distribution <laughs> gets plopped into their hands. You know, please, sir, may I have some more? But they don't get to demand that. And so if I'm the manager of my own LLC, I just say, well, we're not making any distributions this year. And so the creditor stands there with their empty hands. And that may be OK to the creditor, except it's a pass through entity. And so what happens? Any income that LLC makes gets passed through to the members to go on their tax return. Right. So if my LLC made one hundred thousand dollars in income and that creditor has just stepped into my shoes for benefits and burdens, what do they get? a tax bill. Now they have to report and pay the, the tax on the hundred thousand dollars worth of income, even though they got no distribution. So mm -hmm. creditors don't like that. And if I, as the manager of the LLC oh, yeah, said, right. said, Hey, you know what? This LLC is having a capital call and all members need to kick in a hundred thousand dollars to pay for operations. Guess what? That creditor needs to pony up a hundred thousand dollars because they stepped, step, uh, stepped into my shoes for benefits and burdens. So creditors don't like it. They're always looking for a way around it. And the only way they usually can get around that is if you have either not set up your LLC properly or you have not managed it properly. You've commingled your money with your personal stuff. You haven't adequately capitalized your LLC, meaning you haven't funded it enough, things like that. But if it's set up properly, managed properly, then it tends to have a good creditor protection um, veil that a land trust will never have. Land trust just counts on smoke and mirrors and hey, hey, you can't find me. <laughs> but if you find, yeah, right. find you, you know, they got you. Right. So if you use a land trust, by the way, the benefits of it are you can do a lot of deals with a lot of flexibility and you can move fast because you're not setting up 100 LLCs. You're not having to deal with the state. You're not paying all the fees. Uh, so you can move fast and you have a lot of flexibility. You lose some creditor protection. But one thing everybody should do if they use a land trust is never name themselves as an individual beneficiary of that mm. land trust. The beneficiary should always be their LLC or maybe it's a, a personal property trust. And then that beneficiary is an LLC, you know, stack up your layers to make it harder and harder for a creditor to pierce that smokescreen to find you. Right. 
Do you, I don't know if our viewers know how much people have paid for that information that you just shared. <laughs> I, see, that's, that's what I learned. I learned, yeah. I learned yeah. that today. Yeah. I had no idea that it was yeah. for the burdens as well as the benefit. Right. Well, my wow. hourly rate when I do consulting now is five hundred dollars an hour. So, how many months was that? How much? <laughs> how much work did you get? But the real value is how much money did I just save you? That's <laughs> exactly what my hourly right. rate is. But exactly. What did I save you in litigation costs and everything else? So that's really what you look at. That's exactly exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. a lot of people don't look at things that way. Right. I was always